Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Back at the end of 2017, not long after I started the Ancient Architects channel, the Great Pyramid hit the headlines with news that a giant void had been found inside the structure above the Grand Gallery. The large void became the focus of media attention with all sorts of ideas about what it contained. Some said it was an abandoned chamber that was used to help lift large granite blocks high up into the structure during construction. Others speculated it was the lost tomb of King Khufu, while some said it may contain an ancient throne made of meteoric iron. Whilst it is fun to speculate, the fact is that nobody knows. Just weeks after discovering the void, images of the flying robot that was being built to explore the chamber were released, but since then I've heard nothing. The Scan Pyramids project website has gone quiet, and their Twitter feed doesn't shed any light about what they have planned. They retweeted a post by Life Science on January the 1st, which showed their Great Pyramid Void diagram with the headline, Archaeology Discoveries to Watch For in 2019. But we really don't know if there are any plans to explore the cavity. Two weeks ago I emailed them to inquire, but I've had no response. Whatever is going on, I don't know, but the subject of this video is the second void discovered by the Scan Pyramids research team back in 2016, because this one is incredibly easy to explore, and is arguably the most important, yet because it is smaller, it already seems to have been forgotten about. In fact, since it was discovered, it was rarely talked about, yet the significance is huge. But before I get into the details of the second void, let me give you a bit of background about the discovery. The most recent paper that was published by the research team in the journal Nature explained how they imaged the pyramid with muons, the byproduct of cosmic rays that are only partially absorbed by stone. The resulting cosmic ray muon radiography allowed the team to visualise the known and unknown voids within the Great Pyramid. They detected a large void at least 30 metres in length and a similar width to the Grand Gallery, and also located directly above it. The team set up three different technologies in and around the pyramid, and all of them confirmed the void's existence. 18 months later, and we've really not heard anything more, except for an Egyptologist who hit the news trying to debunk the finds, which I reported on last year. Although the large void grabbed the headlines because of its size, and was also the main focus of the journal, the other void being discovered a year before, and also being smaller, has escaped the limelight, but I believe that this not only is the key to unlocking the hidden chambers of the Great Pyramid, but it's also relatively easy to access. If explored, it would rewrite the history of the last remaining ancient wonder of the world. So, what do we know? The smaller void is located directly behind the arch of the two chevron beams, which is above what is believed to be the main entrance into the Great Pyramid, that being the opening of the descending passageway. This is approximately 56 feet above the ground, and east of the central north-south axis. Of course, today, the descending passageway is covered over by a grate, and tourists take the so-called Al Mamun entrance to access the pyramid. But behind the arch chevron blocks, the muon radiography was crystal clear, and this 3D diagram shows us exactly where the small cavity is, directly behind the arches, and really, this shouldn't be all that surprising. Have you ever looked up at the entrance of the Great Pyramid, and wondered why there are these enormous stone arches, high above the opening of the small descending passageway shaft? From a structural point of view, they are completely unnecessary. They are made from the same limestone used to case the pyramid, but they are too large for the roof of the descending passageway, and far too high up in relation to it. What many people don't know is that these chevron blocks are not the original outer blocks of the pyramid, and by analysing the stones surrounding them, Jean-Pierre Houdin, and later the Scan Pyramids team, noted that there are many more chevron blocks missing, which originally would have created a larger, far more grander entrance on the northern side of the structure, extending out by a further 10 metres from where the chevrons currently are today. If all the chevron blocks were still in place, we can calculate that there are six lower and three upper chevrons missing, which originally would have completely covered the area where the descending passageway begins, enclosing it inside a small room or entrance chamber. According to Houdan, the once covered Great Pyramid entrance chamber, which is now open to the elements, offered two ways inside the pyramid. There was the lower entrance into the descending passageway and an upper entrance that led to a smaller chamber behind the chevrons, the same chamber recorded by the Scan Pyramids project. This led to another ascending passageway that went up into the pyramid, possibly joining up to the large void discovered in 2017. 
This stone shown here, known as the Strabo Stone, today blocks access to the second room. The work of the Scan Pyramids project confirms work done by Jean-Pierre Houdin more than 25 years ago, where he used microgravimetric measurements which detected an anomaly beneath the north face of the pyramid in exactly the same place as the one discovered by the Scan Pyramids team, but with a different scientific technique. It was slightly to the east of the pyramid's north-south axis, and therefore aligned with the other known corridors inside the pyramid. Houdin could also prove that the irregular shaped Strabo stone that currently blocks the entrance was pushed into position from the inside, or alternatively, ropes were tied around the two notches and the stone was pulled from the outside. Houdin noted mortar protruding under the right rafter and in front of the blocking stone, and that there is a limestone block that has been pointed with plaster in front of the Strabo stone. This has a perfectly flat finish, and logically, all of this indicates that this must have once been an entranceway. The triangle that is formed beneath the arch has not even been completely covered by the Strabo stone, and the upper 40 centimetres, according to Houdin, has simply been filled up with stonework, possibly from the inside. If you don't believe him, here is what the Greek geographer Strabo of the 1st century BC said about it. I quote, At a certain height, on one of its sides, there is a stone that can be removed, allowing us to see the entrance of a tortuous gallery or hypogeum, leading to the tomb. So, Houdan and now the Scan Pyramids project have concrete geophysical evidence backed up by physical observations that the true main entrance into the Great Pyramid is directly underneath the arch, which is exactly where you'd expect it to be. Furthermore, all you need to do to confirm this is to drill a small hole into the top 40 centimeters of the triangular section under the stone chevrons to see inside. The damage caused would be minuscule, but the potential return would be huge. Talking after the discovery of the two new chambers in the pyramid, Mehdi Teubi of the Scan Pyramids project said that it is likely that they are in fact connected. Clearly what we have inside the Great Pyramid is a second set of shafts and tunnels, unexplored for millennia. Not only that, due to the opening being directly behind the chevrons, this is quite clearly the main entrance into the pyramid. So, what can we learn from all this? Houdan believes the two routes or sets of passages both lead to the King's Chamber, and, as I've discussed in an earlier video, there is likely to have been a second way into this chamber. There is a block at the bottom of the northern wall of the King's Chamber that is not load-bearing, and is the same size as, or slightly larger, than the sarcophagus, and also lines up perfectly with where it is positioned, meaning that it could be how the sarcophagus actually got inside the chamber in the first place, as it is too large for the entrance used today. Let us say for the sake of argument that the pyramid is a tomb, and Khufu or some other pharaoh is or was once laid to rest inside. I know that many of you don't want to go there, but let's say for the sake of argument that this is true. Houdan says that Khufu's body would have been transported through the main entrance as you'd expect, the entrance identified in this video. The body would have then been transported through the unexplored internal shafts to the king's chamber, parts of which have been identified by the Scan Pyramids project. Therefore the shafts that we know about, namely the descending passageway, subterranean chamber, well shaft, grotto, queen's chamber, grand gallery and so on, may all in fact be functional, more industrial parts of the pyramid, possibly used in its construction. Many, including myself, have shown how water was once present inside the pyramid, and some have shown how it was harnessed to actually build the structure. Experts have long noted the lack of hieroglyphs inside the Great Pyramid, but maybe that's because the shafts that have been explored were not created for any ceremony or pomp, but were in fact industrial or constructional. Why would you decorate industrial shafts and chambers with murals and sacred texts? Obviously you wouldn't, as there's no point. If the authorities open the main entrance and explore the new shafts, now identified by more than one scientific source, then there could be groundbreaking discoveries, possibly hieroglyphs, funerary objects and more. But maybe the reason these chambers have not been opened is because they may reveal hard factual evidence that the Great Pyramid wasn't the tomb of King Khufu, a revelation that would have huge reverberations in the study of ancient Egypt. Whatever the true purpose of the Great Pyramid was, I believe that all the answers can be found by drilling a small hole into the masonry below the chevrons and above the Strabo stone. We don't need to build expensive flying robots and send them high up into the Grand Gallery to bore a hole into the ceiling. We just need to insert a small endoscope into the masonry in this easily accessible area on the outside of the pyramid. It's inexpensive, quick and easy. 
Would there really be any kind of uproar about scientists defacing the pyramid if nothing was found? I certainly doubt it, and with more bombs going off around Giza, injuring tourists as we saw just recently, I would think that a new discovery of this magnitude is exactly what the authorities need to keep people coming to the country. It's just exploratory work that's incredibly easy to do. But the true entrance has been known about for more than 25 years already, and I would hazard a guess that 25 years from now it still won't be opened. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.